Now in this video we are going to continue with our discussion on the different levels or the different models of the router which we have seen. If we just go back, we have seen the Cisco hierarchy of the routers where Cisco develops the routers in three layer hierarchy, access level, distribution level and the core routers. So probably in this section we will get into more in details on the different kinds of ports you will find on the routers and also before we get into the actual ports which you will find on the backhead of the router. First we need to understand a basic classification of the routers. We have two classifications like fixed routers and modular routers. So mostly in the today's networks we don't find these uh, fixed routers. Now the major difference is in, the, in, in case of fixed routers, in, sorry in case of modular routers we have some slots. You can see the routers, we have a slots available. You can see this is one slot and on this slot we can place the cards. Okay. If you want to add any card like, like we do on a computer, on the computer we have some PCI slot where some white kind of slot where you can add some graphic card, you can add some LAN card if you want or the modem card like that where you have some free slots available where you can purchase the cards and you can add the cards. Now what exactly in these cards? In these cards you have some extra ports uh, which you can connect to the router. Okay. So we have some slots available where you can add the cards and this kind of routers we call them as modular routers. And most of the series what you will see in today's production networks you will find all the routers as modular routers. And the difference between fixed router in case of fixed router the difference is you have all the ports fixed on the motherboard. So all the ports are integrated on the motherboard and they are non upgradable you cannot remove these ports you cannot add these ports. So typically your 2500 series routers, some 800 series routers. Now these routers comes under a fixed router category. Okay, so there's only one major difference between these two classifications. Uh, and, and most of the time uh, in the today's networks, you will find mostly modular routers where you, you will definitely have some slots. And the number of slots depends upon the different models of the router. Okay, so the next thing we'll see here in this section when the major topic will be focusing on what are the different types of ports you will find on the Cisco routers. Okay. So majorly all the ports what we have on the router, this is the back side of the router. You can see the back side of the router. Okay. So probably you'll find some ports here. You have some serial ports, you have some ethernet ports and there is a console auxiliary port. So we'll see the differences, but all these ports are categorized into three categories. We have a LAN ports, we have a WAN ports and we have administrative ports. Now what's the difference between these three kinds of ports? Now the LAN port is the port which is going to connect to your switch and typically we call this port as a LAN port. The port which is going to connect your local area network on the switch we call that particular port as a LAN port. And, and, and the port which is going to connect to your WAN or the wide area network or which is going to connect to the remote location, we call that particular ports as WAN ports. So more in detail on the WAN connectivity and all these things, we'll get into that more in detail in our next sections. But in this section, we are going to, we'll try to understand the different kinds of ports you'll find in your, in, on your router generally. So three ports, LAN ports, WAN ports and administrative ports. So let us start with first category LAN ports. Now when you talk about LAN ports, typically the LAN ports looks, looks similar to your normal kind of port which you find on the back side of your computer, your RJ45 ports. Now you know RJ45 connectors, the port what you find on the back side of the port, similar kind of port on your routers. How many you will have, it all depends upon the different platforms of the routers and mostly these RJ45 ports supports different speeds like you have some ethernet ports which supports 10 mbps uh, we may have some fast ethernet ports which is 100 mbps speed and we, we can also have some gig ethernet ports in some of the new routers like ISR, G2 routers, 1900, 2900 series routers you will also find some G0 by 0 interfaces which supports uh, 1000 mbps ports okay so most commonly if you're using some 1800 or 2800 series routers the most of the routers they do support fast ethernet as a default ethernet port and if you're going with some old routers like 2500 series routers 
you may you may find some ethernet ports also but in today's networks you'll either find mostly either ethernet or gig ethernet ports and which port you will find it all depends upon the different models okay and you can see here these ports are my ethernet ports and this is my 26 i think it's 2621 series router which is having two fast ethernet ports inbuilt into that okay so we call them as ethernet ports and they look like uh, the same port what you find on the back side of your computer and the next category of the ports we have something called wan ports <coughs> Now these WAN ports are the ports which are going to connect on the remote location from one router to another router. Okay. Now in this Ethernet port, typically we, we call these WAN ports as serial ports. And here you'll find two kinds of serial ports here. So we got two kinds of serial ports. One is 26 pin serial port, which will be very small in general. And then you have some 60 pin serial ports. Now 60 pin are a little bit uh, older, older, older ports which you'll find probably in today's networks you'll find mostly your 26 pin port uh, which is also called a smart serial port and the good thing about this serial port is on the same one slot you can have two number of ports and instead of having one particular port and typically these cards uh, you'll find this uh, one interface card, one T card uh, which means one serial port, two serial ports and also you'll find some 40 or 80 ports something like that we'll be getting into the, all these modules when we when we start adding the modules and all those things but this whenever you you realize or you see something like serial ports you have to understand this is your wan port which is used in your wan connections and the number of ports again depends upon the different models of the router the next category of the ports which we'll see we got a third category of the ports we call them as administrative ports right so the first category is a lan port wan port and then you can see these two ports here console and auxiliary and these two comes under the category of administrative ports now what's the difference now the lan ports which is going to connect to the lan which is going to forward your traffic Okay. The port which is going to connect in the LAN, we call that as a LAN port and the port which is going to connect on the WAN, we call it as a WAN port. Typically your serial ports and Ethernet ports, we can say, Ethernet, fast Ethernet. Now these two ports are actually responsible for sending and receiving the traffic, your data, it is going to send and receive. But the port, we call it as administrative ports, they don't, they don't actually carry any traffic or your data. It actually carry your commands or whatever you type on the router. Which, which you need to configure or for administration we call it as let's try to see let's try to see how exactly it's going to differ so let's take an example i got a router here so diagrammatically it looks uh, we, we just draw like this and i want to configure this router you can see this is my one router which is a 1700 series routers i got one router here now this router is a more like a flat box and it doesn't have any input or output device so which means if I have to do any configuration on this particular router, so which means I want to configure this router. You cannot use your router without configuration. You have to go to the command line of the router and you have to configure everything in that particular command line. But if I want to do that, what I need to do? So then in that kind of scenarios, we can do something called console connection. So we're going to use this console cable. I can see this is a console cable here. Now this console cable will have one side you have an RJ45, the downside this is an RJ45 connector and which is going to connect on the console port, this is a console port here and then the other side of the cable you have a DB9 port, nothing but your 9 pin port which generally you will find on the back side of your computers. We call this particular port as a COM port. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll connect one side of the cable to this a particular router on the console port and the other side we are going to connect on the computer that is your db9 port okay we call this kind of connection we call it as a console connection so diagrammatically we represent something like this we got a console cable connection this is how you you represent diagrammatically uh, we call this as a console connection now once we do this console connection once i am done with this console connection now we need to open one application called hyper terminal probably uh, more on this how to connect a router uh, we'll see probably in our next sections when we start our basic command line or putty software some terminal softwares 
and once you open that it will open up one window on your screen computer screen and once you power on the router here you can see whatever is happening on the on the router on this computer screen in fact not on the computer screen it's on the on this particular software or or on that particular software screen and whatever you type here it's going to execute the same thing on the command line of the router via the console port okay so we call this kind of this is actually uh, we call this as administration which means we are not sending any traffic through this console port we are actually configuring our router and if you want to configure the router then we need to get into the command line of the router and this console connection will allow you to get into the command line of the router by by doing these things so console connection and then we need to open some emulation tool for that so we call this as local administration so the local administration means you have a router you have a pc in the same location and if you want to configure we can do this kind of thing <coughs> okay the next thing is now just now we have discussed this console port is the one which is used for local administration now there's one more port which is also called as auxiliary port and these two ports are for administration only for doing basic configurations but the only difference is the console is for local administration and the auxiliary port is for the remote administration so what is the meaning of remote administration let's try to understand that let's take an example i got a router in a different location so i'm sitting in a different city let's say i'm in in my city here in hyderabad and you got a router in a different location in a bangalore or in different location and what i want to do is i want to configure my router here so my requirement is i want to configure the router by sitting here now normally console connection is something which is only for local administration and i want to configure the router remotely the same way as i did via console so in this kind of scenarios what i can do is i can ask anyone on the remote location to connect my router to the modem probably your dial up modems okay and the same way i'm going to connect my computer to a dial up modem and then these two dial up modems are actually connecting to each other through a telecom line and then and then through that telecom line and every 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 telephone line will have some number to dial up so i'm going to dial to that particular number and i'm going to connect remotely to that particular modem and then i can i can do the similar kind of connection here and i can do the same thing what i can do via console and we call this as remote administration but again to make this remote administration you need to have a separate set of dial up connections of modems on both the sides and you need someone to be to be there to configure uh, or connect provide the connectivity on the remote location as well as on your location okay so we use the same console cable here which we use but the converter will be different uh, based on the modem you need to convert that into mostly db25 25 pin converter you will find on the modems we connect onto that particular modem okay so we can do the same thing like what we did via console by using actually via remotely we can say okay so the major drawback with this kind of auxiliary connection is uh, one thing it is not reliable that's a reliability is one of the major factor and it doesn't support your high speed data transfers because you know uh, it's just a dial up connection and also it is not reliable okay so most of the production network scenarios in today's networks i i generally every location you have some engineer uh, we, who can do the console connection and he can do the basic configurations and i can sit and access the device remotely via telnet so there is one more way to access the devices remotely via telnet or in routers we call it as vtv lines we'll be getting into this uh, how to use telnet how it's going to work more in detail in the later on sessions so telnet is the most common way of accessing the devices remotely in today's networks okay but you have a two different types of ports which you will find on every cisco router we have a console port which is for the local administration and we have and we have another port called auxiliary port which is for the remote administration okay so the next thing let's now if you are using some of the old routers let's say in case if you have some 2500 cis routers probably this is end of sale no more uh, no more uh, from the cisco but if you are using some in the lab environment if you are using some 2600 2500 cis routers you will find one interface called aui interface we call this interface as attachment unit interface 
so which is typically a 15 pin connector you will have and this is actually your ethernet port only so it supports only ethernet mostly e0 port it does it supports up to 10 mbps ethernet zero port but if you if you just talk about the lan if you remember in the lan we use which kind of connector for all our cabling we use an rj45 connector right so how we are going to connect this particular router to the switch because in the lan we use and we use some straight cable and we use some rj45 connector inside that so we need a converter for this now to fix this what we need is we need to we need to have one converter which can convert this aui 15 pin converter into rj45 and that connector we call it as transceiver here so to 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 connect this kind of devices we need to get a transceiver a small a small device or a converter we can say on one side of that particular device you have a 15 pin converter which is going to connect on the router and this end is going to connect on the router 15 pin and on the other side of that particular converter you have an rj45 where we are going to plug the cable rj45 connector on this particular port so that's how we provide the ethernet connection in our routers if you are using uh, some of the 1500 series 2500 series routers in general but whenever you see this kind of interface you have to understand uh, either it will be 15 pin or rj45 and no more in today's networks i can say not really found in the today's uh, routers the new model series or the new series routers which comes from cisco but uh, probably in your lab environment or probably if you have some old routers you may find this 15 bit converter uh, mostly you'll find rj45s and when, it, when you talk about wan interfaces most of the wan interfaces you will have serial interfaces you have a different numbering serial 0 serial 1 serial 0 by 0 probably more on this numbering i'll be getting into that in my next sections when we do the connectivity kind of thing and you have two kinds of serial connectors we have 60 pin or 26 pin connectors and in some routers again if you are using some 2500 series routers you will also find some bra kind of interface a basic red interface this is actually used in isdn kind of connections isdn dial up connections and in today's networks we don't use this isdn interfaces as well and typically it will be more uh, exactly the same uh, rj45 connector you will find but on the back side of the router it will be written as bri bri port so whenever you see this port you have to understand it's a one kind of one interface also uh, which is which is used for isdn kind of implementations so mostly in in the new routers it's it's, a, it's you don't find this kind of ports generally and then finally we have some administrative ports we have something called console which is rj45 connector which is for local administration and we have an auxiliary port for remote administration. 